Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. Today, we're taking a look at yet another 75% aluminum keyboard. Right now, I'm kind of gathering up a list of 75% aluminum keyboards, uh, some with knobs, some without knobs, some bare bones, some pre-built. But I want to do a comparison video of all these different in-stock keyboards that even a year ago would have only we would have, we would have only seen in group by models. But now these are all in-stock keyboards, and I'm going to be taking a look at a lot of them. Um, some of them are going to be similar to others, so I won't cover them, but I will do my best to cover as many as possible. But I'll be doing individual videos of all of them before I do videos of all of them together. So today we're taking a look at the M1 V3 from Monsgeek. Now, I have taken a look at the M1, the M1W, and several other models from Monsgeek. I've always been pleasantly surprised they are solidly built keyboards. They have been known to be some that require, whether it's a force break mod or another mod, just to make sure that they sound to their top notch, though they have been improving on that. This one in particular, I think is going to show a lot of that growth that Monsky has had over the years, um, just in the short time that they've been in the hobby. Uh, now they did break away from Akko or their sister companies with Akko, but they, they definitely cut their teeth with a good company. And I think that this is going to be one of those to beat, especially when price is taken into consideration. Anyway, we're taking a look at the white bare bone version of the M1 V3 from Monsky. So without further delay, let's go ahead and jump on into it and see what we have in the box. So as always, before we get to the keyboard itself, let's see what we have in the box. We do have a short, but pretty comprehensive user manual in a couple of different languages. So that allow us to know what the default system bindings are or bindings to control the different, um, the different layers as well as what's in VIA. Now VIA thankfully allows us to make changes. Now, unlike a lot of the other VIA keyboards out there that are actually closed source firmwares that pretend to be VIA, so they communicate with VIA software. This is actually based on QMK, and if the source is available, it usually takes them a couple weeks to release the source. I will put a link down there, or down in the description as soon as, it is, as the QMK source is available. Monsgeek, uh, thankfully taking a cue from Akko, ensures to, to include these in their, their keyboards, which is basically a user QA QC card. So somebody has actually hand gone through this, ensured that everything works and ensured that everything that needs to be included is included in the box. In the accessories box, we do have a quite a few number of items. We have a nice rubberized USB A to USB C cable with metal ends and really nice tension relief. Um, I've actually been very fond of Akko cables and Monsky cables as they're just, uh, they're well made. No need for an aviator connector, just a nice coil in there. And um, I have yet to have one get quirky because of a loose um, connector. So I do like these and I think they're well made. We have a standard wire keycap puller. We have an IC chip cooler style switch puller. We have some extra gaskets for the plate in case we want to replace a lost one or add more to it if there is tabs that don't currently have some on there. We have force break um, mod strips that they do include in case if you want to add force break strip mod. And then they have a Allen wrench tool to the size for opening up the case. And despite this keyboard coming preloaded with plate mounted stabilizers, it does have the ability to have screw state, the screw in stabilizers. So they do include a set of PCB screw in stabilizers, which 
not too many companies do, and I really do appreciate that Monsky kind of gives you the choice right out of the mat. Like, hey, there's a bare bone kit. You want screwing? May as well do it now. Now, one more item that was included in the box is this double-sided layer. I believe this is for below the PCB, uh, but above where the daughter board sits, as well as, I guess it just probably work for the M1 V3W, uh, which would have battery connectors on this side. It looks like it has PET on one side, and if I had to guess, I would say a boron on the other side. And here we are with the Monsgeek M1 version 3, or revision 3. Uh, thankfully, like other Monsgeek and Akko keyboards, they include a keyboard cover, which I am very thankful for. I know it's a simple little thing, but the longer that you use this when you're not using the keyboard, the longer the, your keyboard is likely to last. One more thing that you can use and have in your arsenal to make sure that your keyboard lasts as long as it possibly can. So here we are with the latest revision of the Mons Geek M1 V3, and I've got to say, I do like it. I like what I see. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yep, we can see that we have layers of PET above the PCB and IXPE above that layer of PET. So basically, we have the hi-fi layers now that all of these other boards are, have been having. Um, I do some see some slight differences on how the keyboard is made, especially in the sides. We no longer have what I would call that uh, bar um, that would come in the middle. Let me see. I have a... Yes. I do have an M1 right here. So as we can see, there is that layer, how they did it before. And now we just have two pieces of that, a top and a bottom, and that's it. We do have a newer switch, and this one, as opposed to being sunk in with the other switch, or basically staying to the perimeter of the hole. This one actually has a collar that goes down and actually sits above the case. And it actually has a softer click and touch. The weights feel very similar. Um, we have the Mons Geek logo at the bottom. We have six screws. Appears to be shorts at the front, long ones at the back. We will come back to that and open it up at a later date. Today we're sticking stock because this is going to be one of the keyboards that's going to be on the lineup of the video that I'm going to make of all the 75% that are currently out, or at least a good majority of them. Um, <clears throat> so we see that we have a south face and PCB. We have what appears to be a PC plate. I don't think that's POM. I've got to say I believe that is PC, and I will um, double check on that. Uh, we do have the plate mount and stabilizers. Again, when I come back to it, we will be doing some mods. We'll put in that other uh, piece of PET and pour on foam. Uh, we may do a Tempest tape mod, and we will definitely do the screw and stabilizers, as well as probably change out some switches. But today, in order to compare it to the rest, I'm going to stick to some basic ACO stuff. So for switches, I decided to go with some Akko switches. These are the latest revisions of the Cream Blue Pro. These are their V3. Um, the first ones, I never saw a V1. There was the V2 that were the regular stem. And then there's these, the V3s, that are the, the V3s. I don't know which one the V1s were, but maybe I just missed them. If you have some or if you know, or if those were just the prototypes that started out with V2, let me know. Anyway, we will be loading these up with the Octo V3 Pro switches, which are pretty good switches out of the box a little bit that I've played with them. And we'll be topping them off with Octo PVT silent keycaps. Uh, they're basically, uh, I guess you could call them like a Dolch, modern Dolch perhaps. Um, 
but their highlight keycaps are a lighter blue. Um, I think this is a anything that has that retro beige gray look is just right up my alley. But I thought that this cherry keycap set would do good to just act as a stock keycap set if they were preloaded as they usually use Akko keycaps being that they're sister companies they're in the family let's just say so uh, with those Akko silent there's also some nice pink highlight keys maybe we'll use a few of those so right now I'm just going to go ahead and load these up so that we can get to the next part just some quick specs and thoughts on the Akko V3 Pro cream blue it is a tactile switch it has an operating force of 45 grams with a tactile force of 55 grams plus or minus 10 grams of force it has a total travel of 3.3 millimeters and has a tactile position that starts at 0 0.10 tenth of a millimeter down into the travel it has a very pronounced bump and it does not feel heavy though it definitely can be felt the switch does sound like it is pre-lubed it is five pin and has four leg tops not wing latch for the price which usually runs between $12 and $15 for a box of 45 switches it is a decent tactile switch the top despite being semi-translucent blue does not affect SMD RGB lights coming from below and here we are with it loaded with the cream pro v3 um i just wanted to plug it in really quick so that we could take a look at the rgbs and see that it's not affected that much by the slightly blue translucent tops i mean we have a little bit of blue shine but now that it goes to rainbow colors you can see that they actually do come through pretty good without any really light read there are definitely some of the especially the older octos that really um, especially if it's like a white light it comes through whatever color the top is but they've redesigned the tops especially on the newer four pin tops instead of the wing latch tops they have much better light uh, allowance to where they don't interfere that much with the lights I just wanted to, to show really quick uh, before we load it up with the keycaps how nicely it looks with the south facing LEDs. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the keycaps now. So here we are with the Monskeek M1 V3 fully assembled. Of course, like I said, I got this bare bone, but we added what you could usually get through either Akko or Mons Geek Shop. Um, some Akko switches and some Akko keycaps, although the silent, I don't think they're in production anymore, if I'm not mistaken, but they're just double shot um, cherry uh, PVT keycaps. And Honestly, I think that this in its stock form compares to all the other 75% that are coming out. And as a bare bone unit, this one is actually much cheaper. Um, not by significant amounts, but it's definitely cheaper. And it comes from a company that has been doing this for a little longer than maybe some of the other ones and they're a company that I know I can trust their support I've only had to deal with them a couple of times because they do a good job at QA 
quality assurance and QC quality control of their products on the way out. But if there's any issues, they take care of them and they're good about it. So um, not only, you know, my one time experience that I had an issue, they handled it perfectly. And this is before we had a, you know, a, a reviewer marketing relationship. Um, and I have received numerous, if not dozens of um, personal callbacks of experiences that people have had when they've had an issue with the Mons Geek and how they just love how they've been treated with Akko and or Mons Geek and their support. So um, this is basically, like I said, it's kind of like, all right, if you want to go bare bone, but you want to get, you know, some different switches. And like I said, these are just the, the plain Akko. I mean, plain. They're, they're pretty good for the price. I think Akko makes some decent switches. Uh, this is the third revision. I've only remembered two, so this is the second version of the switch that I've tested, but they're pretty good. Um, they're slightly long pole, not going to have any issues if you're using a north-facing uh, PCB, but we've got them south-facing here. Um, these are stock as they come. The keyboard is stock without the extras that are included. Like I said, I'm going to keep it that way for right now until I get to compare it to the other 75% keyboards. Now let's see what it looks like once we uh, plug it up and we have PC, yeah, that's what I thought. That PC plate does have a nice way to diffuse that LED light. So we still see it come through even though it is south facing and it has that PC plate. We have that gasket mounting style. So it's nice and it's not super flexy. It's not something that, hey, I feel like I'm on a bouncing on a tr trampoline now it's it's got just enough flex to where you don't feel like you're typing on a concrete surface it's not like you're typing on a trampoline either it's and it, it just sounds great and this is stock like i said we can still apply the force break. We can still apply Tempest. And I will be applying those mods and others. If you have any suggestions, uh, please put them down below. Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the Mons Geek M1 V3. This is the bare boned wired 75% QMK via keyboard from Mons Geek. It is a gasket mounted PC plate and has an aluminum 6063 CNC body. It has a 1.2 millimeter south facing three and five pin hot swap compatible PCB with hi-fi layers, meaning PET layer above the PCB with an IXPE layer above that. It comes pre-installed with plate mounted stabilizers but also includes pcb screw-in stabilizers it has qmk firmware and can be configured through the via firmware interface it is currently available in white black and pink colorways though they have announced that more colors are coming soon the chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface with the back at 35 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Bare bone, this keyboard comes weighing in at 1,606 grams and loaded with switches and keycaps in this configuration, weighs 1,836 grams. The MSRP for this keyboard bare bone is between $69.99 and $74.99, depending on color. For the fully loaded and or wireless version of this keyboard the msrp ranges from 84.99 to 119.99 all of this is available from monsgeek.com links below like i said for me the monsgeek from the first one as i have in handy just over here um i've quite enjoyed it i think they're well built they've they've made corrections along the way because they know you know not everything is perfect the first go. Being someone who's written software for over 30 years, I mean, 
version one is never the best version. Um, it usually takes a good three to four versions as you get the hang of it for you to actually start putting out refined products. So they are going with that iterative process of, you know, fixing the little things, focusing on, you know, certain things and they're getting better and better. They aren't going for a flashy look. They're not going for, hey, look how fancy and look at their chamfers and everything. But it's nice. It's clean. It's modern, in my opinion. And it just, the aesthetic is nice. And the way that it sounds now, it's just. I think that they've definitely hit the mark. They've also, they're adopting to the market price and they've brought the price of this down and it just continues uh, to get better. And I give Mons Geek mad props. I hate to use that. <laughs> I'm, I, I like to recognize them for doing a great job with their keyboards delivering a good product that is reliable and that it's affordable and i mean it's not something that's going to break the bank but you're going to get something that you know that it works and it works well and it also has qmk and via i mean unless it's the wireless version although i do believe they are working on an m1 w via version and i will be reviewing that one as well um so that should be interesting but i've got to say i'm i've been pleased with their keyboards i'm actually i still have to review the mg series because i know they have a full size and a 75 percent no leds and it uses their monsky cloud driver but they're quite well priced so i i do have to take a look at those but as far as what they're doing with the aluminum keyboards in my opinion it is just a great job a great price they are asking a fair value sometimes i'm almost like are you undercutting yourself and i mean qmk via an aluminum keyboard this nice bare bone for 69 dollars for the white 74.99 or 75 dollars for the black and or the purple and i do believe that they have some more colors even coming up soon so um this one is probably going to rank pretty high on that tier list that I'm going to be working on soon. If you have any questions specifically about this keyboard, let me know down in the comment sections below. If there's anything that you'd like for me to take a look at or address it or compare to when I do my 75% off keyboards um, so that I can compare you know, apples to apples, please let me know and I'll do my best to add it to that so that that can be covered um, if you have any questions any comments always i do my best to answer or at least annotate every comment um, and question that's asked of me i do hope that you enjoyed this video a thumbs up if you did a thumbs down if you didn't but please let me know what i could do to earn that thumbs up so i'm going to go ahead and leave you with a sound test stock but i mean everything that i've put in here is stock so it is aco mons geek stock so i'm going to leave you with a stock sound test of the mons geek m1 v3 with the aco cream blue pro v3s um, as well as the aco cherry double shot pbt silent keycap set I want to wish you an awesome day, and until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.